Well, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to the Terry Talks Nutrition Educational Webinar Series. Today's topic is coping with burnout and chronic stress. Our presenter today is Terry Lemerand. Terry Lemerand is a retailer, author, educator, and entrepreneur. He has more than 40 years of experience in the natural products industry. He's researched and developed over 400 formulations, and these continue to be top-selling products in the market today. His personal website dedicated to health and nutrition is available at terrytalksnutrition.com, where you can lead, read interesting articles on natural health and inspiration and can ask Terry your own health questions. And so without further ado, welcome, Terry. Well, thank you very much, Cheryl. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, we're going to be talking today about a really chronic condition, chronic burnout and chronic stress. Now, I think a lot of people in the United States suffer from both, and it's primarily our type of lifestyle. Uh, if you have stress and if you have burnout, if you have fatigue, if you have tiredness, maybe the thing to do is ask your physician to give you a good physical to find out if those conditions are related to a, a disease that you may have that you may not be aware of. There's a lot of cancer, for example, causes chronic fatigue and stress. Um, infection can cause fatigue. There's reasons why we can have fatigue, but if fatigue and chronic stress is related to our lifestyle and to what our, our daily activities, we can do some major things to turn that around. And I don't think those conditions from our lifestyle are worth taking a drug to treat chronic stress and fatigue. We can do that by making some changes in our lifestyle, in our diet, and it may be in some supplements that may make a difference as to how we respond in turning around our burnout, our chronic fatigue, our chronic stress, and tiredness. In fact, in 2016 survey found that 50% of Americans are consistently exhausted because of work versus just 18% who reported similar feelings 20 years ago. Where are we going? And I think a lot of that has to do with our diet. Our diet has changed drastically in the last 20 years, and we're the same human being for the last 3 million years, but our diet has changed more in the last 20 to 100 years than it has in the previous 3 million years. So full-time employees in the United States work an average of 47 hours a week, 18% of workers report working 60 hours or more on a consistent basis. I just saw a report where a woman was working 100 hours a week, I think it was in Japan, uh, and she eventually died because they said she just burned out, wore herself out. Why she did this, I have no idea, but it was just a report that I ran across. Uh, I don't know the complete story, but... This is stress. Here it is right now. Here's another report on it. Recently reported, a Japanese woman dies after putting 159 hours of overtime in a single month. Death by overwork. Not so funny. Is a legally, rec Ill legally recognized cause of death in Japan. Amazing what can happen when we are under stress. So here are some signs that you want to look for as a state of burnout, state of stress, exhaustion. First of all, fatigue, feeling drained and completed all the time, not just occasionally. We all get tired. I travel all over the world, flying all the time, different, different time zones. Um, sir, there's, there's, there's fatigue, there's, there's uh, you know, jet lag, there's all these things that can cause tiredness. Uh, even after a good day of touring a city, you can be tired, but you're not fatigued. You're not drained. You're not, you're not depleted. Insomnia. If you are under stress, you toss and turn and roll. You don't get a really good night's sleep. And really sleep is very, very important to recharge the batteries of our body. Now, we don't have batteries in our body, but we recharge our mitochondria, recharge our cells so that it has the energy levels that we need. And if you're getting less than four or five hours of sleep, six hours of sleep, that's not enough. We need eight to nine hours of good, solid sleep. There are things that we can do naturally to induce a, a natural sleep. So insomnia, can't fall asleep or stay asleep. Distraction, 
We can't focus. We can't pay attention. We have poor productivity. We have poor concentration. And constantly sick. Stress compromises the immune system. Our immune system keeps us healthy, prevents foreign invasion. It's like an army or a, or a, a the police department of a city. It helps us to protect the environment. So when you want to protect the country, you develop an army. The army is our immune system. It protects us against any type of foreign invasion. If we're constantly sick to cold and flu and cough and all those things that go around and we're constantly um, not feeling well, that's part of being burned out and moody. Have you ever noticed that when you haven't eaten right, you haven't slept right, and you don't do this often, but occasionally when you go through those periods where you, you know, you snap at people. You're anxious, you're depressed, you're irritable, even angry. You just are not yourself. And you, oh, hey, you apologize. Hey, I didn't get a good night's sleep last night. I'm sorry. i sorry I snapped at you. But really, if this is ongoing, then it's something to really be concerned about, and you really need to consider taking some action. So what burnout does to your body? Well, it raises blood pressure. Female physicians with reporting high, high job stress were three times more likely to have high blood pressure than physicians with low stress levels. It all affects our metabolic function of the body. And it suppresses the immune system. It compromises the immune system. Subjects with high stress levels were almost three times more likely to catch a cold after exposure to a cold virus that people with low stress levels. With low stress levels, your immune system is perking along just like it should. It's normal. So when we have a virus, our immune system goes into action, kills natural killer cells, takes care of it, stops the invasion of the virus, uh, kills the virus, or whatever it does in order to maintain our environment of the body. But when we don't have a good immune system, everything attacks us and gets into our system. Slow tissue repair. Medical students received experimental wounds, uh, puncture biopsy, during final exa examination and during summer break. Wounds during final exams took 40% longer to heal than wounds during the summer break. We are not ourselves when we're under stress. Our body doesn't function well when we're under stress. Got to get the stress off so we don't burn out, tired, and it ages us. You see somebody who's been under stress for a long period of time, and you haven't seen them for 10 years, 20 years, you look at them, wow, why did that person age so much in the last 10 or 20 years? Causes muscle tension and pain. Burnout doubled the risk of muscle pain in otherwise healthy workers versus workers who did not have significant job stress. The answer to stress is not sugar. Good Lord, sugar should not even be in our environment. It should not even be in our diet. Now, if you do one thing after listening to this program and do one thing constructive, one thing to make yourself healthier, cut out sugar and lower your carbohydrates, especially of those that have been refined and processed, which has nothing but starch, no nutrients, no vitamins, no minerals, carbohydrates, because once they go through our system, they have to be converted to sugar to be metabolized by the body. So we're getting sugar, sugar, sugar in the American diet. In fact, it has been estimated that the American diet, the way it is today, is 80 to 90% carbohydrates and sugar. Crackers, breads, pastas, pies, you name it. We're a carboholic nation. 80% of people eat more sweet sugar when they're stressed out. Why not? I mean, we're stressed and we want pleasure. We want to bring something back to make us feel good. And there is pleasure in eating food. There's, in fact, someone said in an article I read, people would rather give up sex than desserts. Go figure. But they like what food brings to them, the feeling. If they're sad, they eat. If they're lonesome, they eat. If they're depressed, they eat. If they're burned out, they eat. So we get too much food. And what happens when they're stressed out? The stress triggers release of a hormone called cortisol, which in turn leads to an increased appetite, 
and then you eat comfort foods, lots of sugary things. And I, I think that goes even back to when we were children. Remember when you maybe fell down and you scraped your knee or you scraped your arm someplace and it hurt and you cried and uh, what, did, what did grandma do when she was taking care of you? What did mom do? Uh, more than likely they pulled you up on, on their lap and they gave you a piece of pie or some ice cream and all the way they, they wiped away the tears and all you can remember is, hey, when I was hurt, food made me feel good. And so when we don't feel good, we tend to want more sugary comfort food. It makes us feel good. But then what happens? Then you get on the scale. Oh, and you have more stress. Stress is a vicious cycle. We want to get off the merry-go-round. How do we cure burnout? Well, there are two natural herbs that I love that I, I, use, I use personally myself. I don't have a lot of stress, but I do get some stress. When you're traveling, I go to India a couple times a year. That's a, that's a two-day trip. Actually, when I come back out of India and I get into Dubai, and then I have to wait 12 hours for my next flight to, the, to, the, to Europe and then to, out, to, out to the U.S. Oh, my gosh, that's two days of flying and really almost two days in the airport. Now, even though that, hey, it, it happens, I know it's going to happen, I'm prepared for it, oh, there's still stress involved. So all, we all have a certain amount of stress. And I travel a lot. You know, there's a lot of things I do. So, you know, I want to feel better too. And, and, and adaptogens are herbs that make us have the ability to adapt, to change, to adapt to an environment that changes. Whatever happens to it, if we're in cold weather, hot weather, that is stress. If we go through relationships, that's stress. If we go through, through financial obligations, that's stress. If whatever we go through, we are changing. Now, we can accept those changes or we can help have some herbs that are known as adaptogens to help us to adapt to those changes and make it more easy. So I like them. And, and adaptogens is the best cure for burnout. Adaptogens are herbal medicines. They have no significant side effects, non-toxic. I would say zero side effects. They restore the body, meaning they balance the body. They make the body's function harmonize with its, within itself. It brings up what is too low and brings down what is too high. So if you have an over-secretion of hormones or an under-secretion of hormones, or if you have too much of this or too much of that, it balances the body. It harmonizes all of our body functions. And it helps the body adapt and resist the negative effects of stress and illnesses. How do they work? They fight fatigue, provide more energy, strengthen the immune system to fight off illnesses, and can be both calming and energizing without excessive stimulation. Well, how, how can that be? How could it energize me and, and make me calm at the same time? Well, that's the balancing effect. Because as you, as you calm the body, your energy level comes back. So it does all of these things to balance the body and make the body more efficient. And my, I love this one, rhodiola. You know, rhodiola is grown at very high elevations, 12,000, 15,000 feet on top of mountain ranges throughout China, Russia, Tibet, Mongolia. And now they are starting to grow some because the environment is pretty, pretty familiar in, or similar, I should say, in Alaska. At high elevations, plants have to adapt. They, they themselves have to adapt to the environment. So in order to be able to adapt to those environments of high elevations, cold weather, snow, uh, they make more chemicals in the, in, in the plant, not synthetic chemicals, but natural phyto plant chemicals to help them to adjust to the environment. Rhodiola is also called artic root. 
that's native to Russia, northwest China, Tibet, Mongolia, all those high mountain ranges. And the key compounds are rosevins and solidricides. Hundreds of studies on rhodiola showing it's mood lifting, energizing, stress relieving. All of these are great benefits. And there are some really good studies that shows that it relieves depression. And it increases all these energy and all these things. I just, I love this plant. I think it's one of the top adaptogens of all. There's many of them that are very, very eleuthero, um, ashwagandha, uh, andrographis. There's many of them that are really, really good. Shisandra, these are all plants that are powerful adaptogens, but rhodiola, I think, to me, I think it's the king. So here's some relief studies on burnout. 118 patients with symptoms of burnout, as measured by a standardized scale, took 200 milligrams of a standardized rhodiola extract twice daily for 12 weeks. Results, all measures of burnout improved. The overall burnout scores were reduced almost 40%, and 69% of the participants experienced moderate to significant improvement in their symptoms. The greatest improvements were seen in increased energy, and who doesn't want energy, stress, tension, reductions, and improved in positive moods. Participants also reported increased productivity at work. Well, why not? And everything you do, whether it's sports or work or whatever your, 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 your life is like, you're always going to do better if you're not depressed, if you're not fatigued, if you're not tired, exhausted. You know, even just think of this fact that taking something, something like rhodiola, if you are dependent on your physical faculties, mental faculties, for your reproductivity, your, your productivity in your job, you'll make more money. You'll be a better employee, a better worker, a better manager, a better CEO, whatever it is. How can you manage a company being stressed out, maybe yelling at your employees, picking on them, being sarcastic, being rude? How can you, how can you manage anything when you're burned out and you're stressed out? Um, it, just to make everything work more perfectly, you should be take, thinking about rhodiola and other adaptogens. How does it work? Well, it reduces that hormone that we mentioned before, cortisol, that may increase thyroid function. Rhodiola has been studied to show that it actually improves thyroid function. If you're experiencing hypothyroidism, there's good studies that shows rhodiola actually helps to bring it back to more normal function. In a human study, rhodiola was found to improve mood and energy in patients with low thyroid function. Iodine concentrations in thyroid increased from 10 to 14% just 24 hours after taking rhodiola. It improves mental function, stabilizes emotions. This is a big thing. And here's a study a study on a unique rhodiola extract called EPR7 extracted ex extracts to preserve its nat extracted to pr preserve its natural ratios of key compounds found it more effective than seven other rhodiola extracts found in in Sweden in in China in Russia for increasing memory learning clarity focus and mental function and most things you can't see about drugs, essentially non-toxic, no side effects. The only side effects would be maybe makes you more happy. If you can stand to be more happy, that's a side effect. And then the other one, ashwagandha. You know, it seems like many countries have an adaptogen for the support of the population of that country. You have rhodiola in Russia and China and Tibet and those countries. You have American ginseng in the United States. And you have ashwagandha, 
which has been called Indian ginseng. It's an adaptogen from India. Has been used to, it has been used in Ayurvedic medicines for thousands of years, and probably the number one most popular herb in India to restore balance to the body. The key compounds with lithocytes from the root, traditionally ashwagandha roots are washed in milk before being dried. So if you have a milk allergy or a dairy allergy, you might want to check to see if the ashwagandha that you are taking or propose to take uh, is free of, of any milk allergies. It's just something you just want to be cautious of. Ashwagandha for chronic stress. Double-blind, placebo-controlled study. Participants with chronic stress were given a standardized ashwagandha extract called KSM-66 or placebo for two months. And here's the results. Muscle tension and heart rate decreased by 76%. 5% reduction in placebo group. Anxiety, insomnia decreased by 69%. What drug can make that claim? 11% reduction in placebo group. Severe depression, severe. We're not talking about mild to moderate. We're talking about severe depression decreased by 79%. 10% increase, increase, not decrease, in the placebo group. So the placebo group, they got a fake pill. They had more stress, more depression, and those that are on the ashwagandha decreased their depression by 79%. Phenomenal results. Ashwagandha works in some very neat ways. It prevents cortisol, that hormone that causes stress, it prevents cortisol depletion in the adrenal glands as well as having anti-inflammatory, anti-anxiety, brain cell protective, and pain relieving properties, and it's non-toxic. Now here's what, I, here's, here's what I've done. I like to take the two together. Ashwagandha, rhodiola, what a combination that makes. So here's something you should know about it. Look for a clinically studied ashwagandha root that is standardized to at least 5% of the with, with, uh, with, analy with analytes, key compounds. Look for rhodiola standardized to 5%, less, plus or minus 5% rosevins, and 1.8% salurocytes. And I like to do this Here's what I do. I take rhodiola on an empty stomach. I get up in the morning, and basically when people ask me, when should you take vitamins, I always say take vitamins with your meals because vitamins can complement the nutrition of your food, and your food can complement your vitamins you're taking. But there are a few cases where I like to take some things on an empty stomach. So in the morning, I, there's a few things I take on an empty stomach, and rhodiola and the combination of ashwagandha together, I take on an empty stomach. I take, oh, maybe like two servings. In the afternoon, if I feel like I want to take it again, I take two more in the afternoon. But again, on an empty stomach. And I usually do 500 milligrams of the combination of ashwagandha and rhodiola up to three times daily or as needed. It's so easy. You don't have to worry about side effects. So this can be used for anybody who experiences chronic fatigue or tiredness. Now, I also want to make a comment that if your child is complaining about fatigue or tiredness, I would not do anything. Well, just don't say, okay, that's okay. I'll give you some adaptogens. But usually children should not experience, experience fatigue or tiredness or chronic stress. Now, I, I grant you that can happen, but I would want someone to have their, their, their child examined by a physician to make sure there's no infection or some other reason why they're experiencing chronic fatigue or tiredness. But now adaptogens for adults, absolutely safe. 
now beyond burnout. Almost limited, limitless number of uses. Dementia treatment and prevention. We all get cloudy. Many of us have foggy thinking. We don't focus. We can't concentrate. We lose. When somebody's trying to tell us a story or something, we get lost in the story. We, we, we lose relationship with the story. Cancer. It helps to prevent toxicity of chemotherapy. It's an aphrodisiac. Fertility increases libido, enhances sex drive, and even helps those with arthritis and stroke recovery. Almost everything, you'll feel better. And menopause, and, and we could go on because everything that's happening to your body causes stress. Everybody that goes through an illness has stress. Everybody that deals with arthritis is dealing with stress. Stroke, all that is a stress recovery. So we need to think about adaptogens daily and for everything. So I'm going to turn this back to Cheryl uh, for Cheryl to wrap the program up. Thank you so much, Terry. That was really enlightening. I learned something every time I listen to you speak. For those of you who have questions about adaptogens, please visit the Terry Talks Nutrition website at terrytalksnutrition.com. Feel free to just click on that Terry Connects drop-down list and you can ask specific questions. We thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to learn more about adaptogens, to learn more about how to use them to make your health better. For more information, please feel free to visit us at terrytalksnutrition.com where you can sign up for a free newsletter, listen to recordings of past seminars, and ask Terry your specific questions. You can also find us on the YouTube channel, Terry Talks Nutrition. Thank you so much for your attention and we hope to hear from you again soon. Good health to you. Bye-bye.